Welcome back, everyone, to the grand finals here for the Verizon NA Game Changers Series 1, where now the scoreline is 2-0 to zero for the side of Shopify Rebellion. Taking down FlyQuest Red on Sunset, and but this time around, Wyatt, it was so much closer. It has to hurt a lot if you're on the side of FlyQuest, especially when you, they reached map points several times. It is so brutal. Series would have been the map where they have their best chance at winning. Lotus mm. was always going to be tough. Sunset, though, big question mark. Shopify banded against them in their last series, let it through this time. And it looked like it was going to be to their detriment. After Fly got six rounds on the defensive side, I thought they had a, a really, really big chance of winning when it swapped to attack because we've previously seen from this comp that they run that their attack sides are the ones where they really rack up the rounds. The fact that it just slips out of their grasp in this tragic fashion in OT. Now we're headed to Icebox where Floor just thrives. Brutal for Fly. Yeah, I, I do want to shout out uh, that in both halves coming off of Effie's timeouts, like Shopify just went on a little streak. You know, the first half they'd lost four in a row in the middle there. where They're going into the ninth round and shop fire down five to three they won the pistol so that's why it was looking close but then they go on to win three of four and make it a perfectly even half like both halves were perfectly even and then we got into this ot which felt like it was going to be able to drag on for forever with how even the game ended up being um but i think actually every single time there was a time out you could see shopify shifting gears just a little bit you know setting up for some defensive trap plays that really caused some problems for FlyQuest. Indeed, I know why at the beginning of the show you were talking about the role of the duelists, but as we saw in that MVP graphic, it wasn't My just narrative. fluorescent that was it popping off. We have to give some credit <laughs> to Starbound as well. Starbound True. played a fantastic game, barely dying. Cypher on this map, you really do have an opportunity to be a standout dragging player, which isn't always the case for Sentinels on, on many of the maps in, in the pool or just in Valorant generally, but the way you can navigate, especially around the uh, e site as a cypher, in my opinion, it just allows you to set up for so many potential kills, and Starbound was taking advantage of that on, on both sides. A really fantastic performance, but still the narrative, a little bit true. Fluorescent did top frag their team, 26 kills. They won. So, I mean, the duelist narrative, duels matter the most, nothing else matters. Utility this, who cares? You know what I mean? It's still about duelists, right? My narrative, please. Fake. Fake. Starbound I I think my owned that map. Dead. Completely uh, fraudulent analysis. We don't buy narrative. it whatsoever. <laughs> no, like, honestly, like, I, it, it, it's just, it's still such a heartbreaker to me because FlyQuest end up losing that game, but that was just an absolute masterclass on Cypher. You're talking a lot about how you can play so well defensively around that B site, but also Starbound on attack, whether that's going to be Cypher Lurks finding picks through mid, which I don't feel like we saw a ton of, but there are a few times they allowed Starbound to look for a lurk through A into elbow, or even when they're in a post-plant situation, allowing Starbound to look for an aggressive push forward, and they're almost always being able to find kills off of that i think that's where a lot of the round wins actually came from it wasn't just starbound getting these kills all around the map pointlessly mm -hmm. you know unimportant frags it was like very important late round situations where they were getting multiple kills to secure it i know wyatt that we are, are beating this duelist narrative to death but at the beginning of the show we also talked about how sonder having been a duelist before has been so clutch for this team and we certainly saw that on this map as well with her utility usage on breach yeah production demanded that i talk about a non-duelist player or i'll actually be <laughs> fired in the broadcast so i'm going to talk about sonder who frankly hasn't been talked about perhaps enough just generally in this gc series i love what they were doing with the breach especially on the attack side there were so many of these i mean look at what floor had to do to get out of that trap like the some of the craziest mid-stun satchel movement you'll see. But I love how uh, Fly were integrating the Breach into this comp, really effectively using the stuns to try and keep players out on attack. They were trying to gain some space using the harbor walls, pushing up, using the cove to cut off one angle, stunning the other one, catching players. This play here, swinging through the cove with the stun into back sight on one of those pivotal late rounds in the game that could have... You know, it felt like this was, this was the time where Fly was going to win. I believe they did win that round, and then it still slipped away. But I thought that aspect of the game, how they integrated the position, what Sonder was doing there, was very... 
I wanted to give Saunders some, some credit, as I don't think she's been getting as much of it these days playing the initiators when she was playing duels previously, um, but it's still mega impact. Yeah, and real quick before we dive into maps and get ready for Icebox, Shopify Rebellion also showing a great half on their defensive side. Mel with that crazy paranoia, that 1v3. Shopify Rebellion just really coming through. Yeah, I think Shopify showed uh, a few really solid retakes as well. But to mm -hmm. me, it was the the shifts in how they played coming out of the timeouts that I loved from Effie's. Oftentimes looking for very aggressive stack fights, either at round start, you know, playing one side aggressively when they have a Viper's Pit in A main, or uh, like in OT, they're in the mid round taking five players to fight out into mid. It was those types of moves to try and catch FlyQuest before they were going into their execute that I think were very effective for them consistently. Well, now we're going to be diving into Icebox and their backs are against the wall. FlyQuest Red, it is do or die time as we are at match point for the side of Shopify Rebellion. We, it's just such a shame that Sunset didn't go their way because now we're going into Icebox and Shopify Rebellion always looking good here, Wyatt. Yeah, they kicked off their main event here winning a 13-0 on Icebox and Floor died once. It's hard oh. to feel that this is where FlyQuest begin the comeback. Hopefully me saying that is a curse, and they will, but it's uh, not not feeling the best for, for the Fly Bros, right? The Fly Bros among us, like myself, who want to see FlyQuest win, <laughs> not looking good, Ender. <laughs> Yeah, look, we gotta lay all the cards out on the table, because then when the FlyQuest miracle reverse sweep happens, it'll be that much sicker. Because this is a map that just yesterday FlyQuest lost the only map they lost versus Decimate. Now granted, Xan on the Reina put a 28 bomb up against them, and uh, the comp they're going against here, a little bit more normal, but FlyQuest are going to have to make some serious adaptations to deal with that, because this is the map that Fluorescent is just an actual demon. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. The way Fluorescent plays around the A side of the map in particular, or re-swinging into fight lines in B main from up on yellow, like, there's nothing like it. This is Fluorescent's best map, best agent, and you must overcome that to get the privilege of playing another game here. Good luck, FlyQuest. It all comes down to this. It's 2-0 right now in this best of five grand finals. Will Shopify Rebellion, the current reigning North American champions, be able to complete the 3-0 or can FlyQuest begin that reverse sweep? Doug and Baby Bay, over to you. Thank you, Sue. The ever important question, and honestly for Fly Bros, uh, there's not a whole lot to be excited about and a lot to rejoice about because as the desk put together, Dre, we're heading to Icebox. Yeah. Bad things happen when you play Shopify on Icebox. Yeah, and not only because you're playing against Shopify, but they actually also lost Icebox yesterday. So, and and, and it was off of Zan having a dominant performance. And I mean, yeah. if Zan can do it, I mean, I, I for sure Floor can do it. And I really like this Shopify comp. I, I love the stuff that they were doing with the coves and floor dashing onto that A site. And on the opposite side, FlyQuest run a little bit more of a standard comp, which is still very good, but if they if if, if Shopify plays around that dagger very well, it can be outplayed. So mm -hmm. just off the start here, it looks like it is gonna be an early B fight for Shopify. And they're all baiting for Floor, who's just sitting in that back yellow holding the mid to B split. Oh Dude, this floor's is gonna go oh. crazy right here. Oh. Yep. There was the first, Sarah's joining in with it. I thought for a moment they were able to disrespect the harbor wall, so it wasn't gonna matter, but the spam out, and then Floor's positioning was oh so nice. Gosh. They're hunting, dude. One They're prowling. Remains. It's a pack mentality. I mean... And I oh, wait. Oh, oh wait! Oh! oh. <laughs> Just four. Just four, Shopify get the pistol. I, like, I know I've been hyping up a lot of the Shopify players as, you know, as we should be. But Starbond has probably had one of the best series in this tournament. Yes. Going off, even in that pistol, getting four, like potentially bringing it back. That was actually, I don't even know how Floor even saw Starbound there because it looked like Starbound was tucked. Yeah, it looked like she was around the angle. So that trade was. That was wild. Like, I mean, it, maybe if, if Floor is like a centimeter to the left, not able to see Starbound, but. So what it's been coming down to on some of these rounds between these two teams, it's been so down to the wire. 
And Shopify looked like they had such a hard read on that pistol. I don't know. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. Good prep, I guess. It's not a great start. <laughs> All right. You know floor is there. Aggressive angle. Yeah. Second round. There's Here. a good chance there's either a marshal uh, or an outlaw. Do you still push into this? I, I like when jet players decide to disrespect the KO knife. Yeah. Because a lot of teams expect... Oh, enemy enemy jet got knife. They're gonna move. They're gonna rotate. Right. Maybe go to the other site potentially. But when you sit there and you really challenge, it makes it even more oppressive for teams because now, okay, yeah, the knife hit, but we gotta invest more into pushing that duelist off. I don't think Floor's gonna clear this. <gasps> nope. Clean. Nice little two tap. I thought for a second Dodo Note was the one in trouble, but the position was perfect the entire time. 30 seconds left. That's one way to punish a, a duelist. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Now they have that outlaw. Oh, and the dart connected. Oh, Here's the outlaw. This isn't good. Perfect. No, it's not. Perfectly found. The potential of the thrifty on the cards, unless Shopify can stabilize, and it does not look like it's going to be the case. Melanoia left alone. Oh my god. Pushing through the wall. The classic connects. A thrifty round to tie us up at one. Gun here. As I'm speaking about how how much I like when Jets decide to stay. Floor, just not understanding that. Dodo Nut got pushed all the way up into that jail area. And that kill alone, putting the outlaw in the hands of Starbound, who's been having a crazy series, including last map. Uh, yeah, you were mentioning that earlier. Starbound has been very that. impressive. Don't want that. The outlaw's so good. And now you have it going into this round too. This is so good for you. Should be free kills. Should be. There they go. One was found. That's all it's all mine for Star Round. So much of the talks of playing against Shopify is don't make mistakes. Don't give them yep. the opportunities. But now we're seeing the, the opposite of Shopify actually making a, a, a crucial mistake. Yeah. One enemy remaining. The question is, where does the punish come in and how and and how long can you continue to snowball this and yeah. punish? Because as we were talking about in the previous map, Shopify have this like weird tendency to pull rounds out of half. So <laughs> I think if you're a fly quest, yes, Shopify made a massive mistake. You stay double down, you stay button up, and I think you can really punish this on a map that you shouldn't necessarily be getting an advantage on. Yeah, taking that round and running away with it is is what you want. And right. they were in a similar spot on, on, I think, was it Lotus, where they ecoed, and then on their on their bonus, kind of trolled when they had the outlaw. So, like, I hope that they let Starbound cook a little bit here, try to take some of these fights, at least get a leg shot or a body shot on, the, on a somebody from Shopify, instead of going for, like, a full five hit. Yep. Yep. Allow your guns to, to, to do some work. I mean... You have such a good buy going into this. And the KJ ult. I like the way they're playing, but... They're starting to clear out some of that mid utility, too. They have to understand that's where the push is coming from, and it's fast. Shopify there to agree. Oh. Yep. Spike down mid. Some of that spam coming One through is nice. But it's all just a tease. Yeah. I, I just, I feel like something that FlyQuest can can really work on and just in the future in general, or even if they take a time out and try to make the adaptation and maybe for next half is on these bonus rounds, maybe just trying to cook up something a little bit, left. a little bit better. But oh, this timing from Blaze is actually One perfect. Oh my gosh. Standing ahead. Oh. No way. Oh, I can't believe Sarah swung and took that fight. 30 HP. Oh my goodness, Lace almost did they that. The fight. Who are we to disobey? Just imagine, Doug, if they take their time with everybody, when everybody's alive, right? Look, yeah, at, look yeah. at how much of an opening Lace was able to have. Enemy remaining. I really want them to work more on prodding Ooh. somebody into the sights on those yeah. rounds. Yeah, yeah. And maybe we'll see it here with Starbound on the up, attack up. 
fifth round. This is not something you see every day. No, but you feed the hot hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Starbound has a hot hand right now. Starbound has Our to be the one taking you. these first engagements with the op, though. Here. I need to see more aggression. With this op, especially with the way that Shopify plays, like this kind of using util off a of contact style. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, that's oh, really aggressive. Was... Oh, and Lace gets one with the ult. That one two punch was way too was much really for good. Alexis. Yeah. And then they cut noise. Just have the op post. I like this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no way. I thought she was dead. But Noya plays her life. Gets the kill, stays alive. It's a temporary reset on the round. Floor one from Blades. Oh, Farbound still with the op. Repositioning, trying to find an angle. This op should get so much hold. value. There's the one smoke. Literally the only smoke they had. Oh. Floor is positioning. Aggressive. One found. So aware. Oh my god! This is getting uncomfortably close. Oh, they had, no, oh there it is. Bobby. I was wondering what the layer was. Yeah, because there's no way they were going to play that far off. There's still not enough time. There's not enough time. A stalemate between these two jets. The kills come through, but the round goes to favor the attack. <laughs> Perfect post plant scenario for FlyQuest, even though they all go down. When you take out both smokes, Headshot. that off gets even more value, and that's how you saw Noya just get picked off. That, right. that singular jet smoke fading while the retake is coming through. Here. So FlyQuest take the lead. An outlaw still in the hands of Starbound. 10 and 3 on the attack side for the Killjoy. <laughs> Outrageous. Having a heck of a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Waiting out the dart. I like this from Dodo Nut. And just having that alt presence alone. It just changes the way that you have to play the defense. Oh, for sure. Kind of scared to peek certain things. And that's actually what ended up having Dodo Nut find that timing onto site with the Sova alt. Mm -hmm. When your alt peaks certain angles, it gives you the confidence to be able to walk up into that space. And be more ready for a passive player that's holding from maybe backside or something like that. Well, and I think on the other side of the coin, you wouldn't be expecting the jet to be contacting up. Yeah. Right? Like, it's just not what you would expect. That's on the floor. And that was really the last weapon they had. They're all going to crumble. Oh my gosh. Just jet things. <laughs> just yep. jet things. Man. That was that was pretty out from Dota Nut. It feels... So good to be able to watch Jets on Icebox again. I, th I know a lot of people out there were like, ah, Icebox. But when you have the Jet on that A side of the map, it's always chaos and so many different things you can do, so many different elevations you can get on. And when you have the knives as well, it's kind of just like a playground in that area. Yeah, it really is. And we've seen some historic moments <laughs> on, on that site. Yeah. The timeout caught from Shopify, just six rounds in on the map. A map that they have made their own multiple times throughout this tournament. And I feel like we should make a bet of if Shopify win this round out of the timeout, how many rounds <laughs> are they going to win no, after the, that? Are they going to win the, the half uh, out? Yeah. Like, because that's what we've seen every time Epi's calls a timeout. Shopify just like they just wake up. Okay, yeah, time to should. try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's almost like it just takes a couple of those rounds of, of just losing for Effie's to download an entire team. So far, FlyQuest has been playing a really great Icebox attack all off of that eco round win. Yeah, they really haven't looked back since then. And, and this, even then, yeah. that eco round win was, was pretty. Yeah, it was. FlyQuest aren't playing like as antsy, I would say, as I... As I as I've seen them play in the past. And I think that's mm -hmm. working to their advantage, like taking their time, getting players like Toto Nut pushed up on that eco round and just holding while they show presence elsewhere, waiting for any mistakes and punishing the mistakes that Shopify make. Because even though Shopify is such a dominant team, no one is truly perfect and people make mistakes. I mean, round by round. Yeah. 
Look at how aggressive. Oh, no, this. You gotta do it if you're the jet. Yeah. They've taken a lot of space. They've invested in Sondra's ult. And now they have a site. And they have the Molly primed and ready for the KJ ult retake, but does this KJ ult come from screen or heaven? Yeah, that's what's tough, man. Trying to figure out where it's coming from. Do you have the protocols to deal with it? Oh, they're ready for it. They're ready for it. A few steps ahead. They're waiting us out a little bit. Now repositioning. Yeah, might as well play out now. Don't need to play it anymore. Sarah. Oh, Sarah's up top. Don't know. Tell Mo. Oh, the numbers their way. No, and Alexis oh my gosh. quietly trying to put this thing back. It's on Alexis now. A 1v3. You hear the outlaw shooting through. Lace gets a kill. Another round for FlyQuest. On the other side of a timeout from Effies. Uh-oh. Yep. All that of is sudden, surprising. Yep. All of a sudden, a different, a different narrative is being made. And I like how FlyQuest is playing this. I... I, I I didn't really agree with them staying in the site, but they, they showed me wrong. Because at the end of the day, they had Starbound playing in that Heaven area as mm -hmm. the win con in case anything else went south. Mm -hmm. This op or martial presence has been a lot. My ult is ready. It's been making Shopify play a lot more passive. And that's opening up the site hits from FlyQuest, and it's, it's just looking so clean. Something else I want to note as well is that FlyQuest has picked the right site, I think, about almost every round other than Pistol. Yeah. Yeah, they've had a couple of really good guesses on what site to hit. You're right. It's a deep wall. They've taken a lot of space. Say is going to get the, the spike down. Look at, look at the layers, man. You've got two mollies. That were there. Yeah, they keep, They're now gone. Yeah, they keep throwing them <laughs> a little bit too early. Yeah. But then also, I wondered if they was going to go ahead and drop the pit right off the bat, but it seems like they're trying to play on site. How did Dota not die, by the way? Nah, I'm not sure. Oh, it is no. just pistols. Say oh, it no, ain't no. so. No, no, no. Say it ain't so. Floor has a weapon. It is planted. Oh, that cove is oh. big. Half? Oh, oh, oh. Half? <gasps> Half? <gasps> They can stick this. Oh, oh, that's big from Thea. Just play bomb. Eight bullets. The Sam oh. through. Oh, no. They did it again. Oh, no, Doug. Dude, that's such a miserable spot for Thea to be in because no matter what, as soon as you spam, you're going to get traded. She had a vandal. There was no way to conceal that. And that's exactly what Floor played into. As soon as the spam came out from Thea at the end, it was an easy pop back from floor. And the op working against FlyQuest in that scenario. Wow, wow, wow. Just a bit of a blunder misplay running in way too early. And honestly, if, if Starbound would have just broken that cove with the op, yeah, it's not ideal. Oh, that was an op in the hands of floor. Uh oh. S Starbound read her like a book. <laughs> Wow. And so that massive investment that they continue to put in the hands of their Killjoy pays off once more. They're in a really good spot right now, especially because this Viper ult is down. That Viper has to stay in that A side of the map, and you'll know mm -hmm. very fast just from audio alone if the Viper leaves that pit. That wall goes up, and you imagine that the rotation is going to come through for Mel here soon. This one-two punch from Dodo Nut and Whoa. Starbound has been insane. I actually, I love this reckoning right now. Look at all the time that Mel is getting. There's so much space she's yeah, able to take. Not down. No. They're still having to clear all this utility. Uh oh. And now with 35 seconds left, you have to ask the question: Do you flip the map? How do you many? rotate back? She has left. to hear that. She has to hear all of that. How many Feeling the get? pressure, trying to take a step back. One is found, the spike hits the ground. And now they've reset, it's been chaotic. Do they go back? Don't know, it's still on B. Oh it seems like that's gosh. what they're gonna try to do. But I don't, are they gonna have enough time? 
10 seconds? 10 seconds left. To get the spike down, that's yeah. a long alley. You have time? <gasps> I don't I think, think they got late. it. I don't think they got it. Oh no my gosh, way. they got it. But it's not gonna matter. Because as the spike goes down in the narrowest of moments, the kills are rough for the defense. My ultimate is ready. Starbound gets their one. But they have to save the op. Holy smokes, what a round. My gosh, and... Remember, your weapon I don't know, they, they spent those extras. I, I didn't even think the bomb was gonna be able to get down. They took an extra second to plant like on that little corner of yeah of the actual site instead of just doing the the usual default plan i think it i think it created too much chaos maybe just go for the safe option next time i wish i, I wish we could have seen how close that was because that it felt was, yeah, i was down to the wire yeah oh Standing ahead. and so shopify steal another one away an aggressive dart and an angle taken from floor with the op Remember last time Starbound got the best of her. Op found now. Should be another free KJ all on this A site. What kind of post plan are we gonna see this time? Are we gonna see maybe everybody playing back this time? Is this a are they trying to fake? No, they're not trying to fake. Just cover their bases. That KJ turret being broken was pretty early, by the way. Yeah, that was instant. Oh, this should be a free kill. Oh, oh the timing no. is so weird. Almost gets a collat. Mel falls. I thought there was going to be more. Alexis is down oh to five my HP. Gosh. And Starbound puts it between her eyes. Wait, are you, uh, you did see all three. You've got to know that they're there. Laser life stays away. Lace with the dart. Noya tucking. They're behind her. They're behind her, yeah. Noya's positioning there was beautiful. Now Sarah's going to get some space too. Last player standing. Soft angle might just be enough. Oh, that dart! Total under 1v2. Sarah not able to hold it. Not able to get it to half! Total no with the Red Bull clutch for FlyQuest! Wow. I mean, the fact that that round was even close, though. Yeah, After these two kills. Yeah, it just makes you feel like... How did that happen? And Noya actually made sound. On the remain. screen of uh, of Starbound, oh. but it was just it was just a little too late, and those shots at the end were crispy. Again, the one-two punch, kind of taking things into their own hands. Now, here we another go. Another op for Floor. Another op for Starbound. A fast mid play. This spot can be so oppressive. Just breaking that early turret alone is oppressive. They're doing such a good job, FlyQuest are finding where this Ooh. op is early. Yeah. They know they've lost Kitchen at this point. Is there going to be in a fight? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's patient. The patience Noia's is key. So the patient. patience is key. Five Noya down. gets them all. That was Viper's pit, too. But if this map is this series has shown us anything, it's that no round is ever safe. <laughs> and so with that in mind, Lace and Starbound push forward. With the daunting task before them, they have to scoop up the spike. They still have to get it down. All right, never mind. Surely. They're not getting that. <laughs> They're Surely. Not getting that. Yeah. There's always a world. I mean, imagine Starbound goes for this peak, gets a collat. <laughs> You're selling too much. Right I, am, I am, I am, I am. You're selling way too much. I definitely am. 30 seconds left. Long grenade out. And so we're going to have some time to talk through why that was successful. Yeah. It's mid to B came out. But honestly, Flacos is kind of lucky they didn't get punished in the actual window itself, right? You had like two they almost players. Did by yeah. Mel, yeah. yeah, you had two players from SR just primed and ready for that, for that B split. And then Noya having the heads up awareness. When you're in that position and you're kind of alone on site, you do one of two things. You either play very, very aggressive in that B main area, or like around like yellow or even pushed up in B main. Or you have the option to go back and do something like that and, and, and wrap around mid and hold. So finding the perfect timing amongst all the chaos of the enemy team and I mean, just clean shots there. 
so snappy. And she didn't really have to worry about that B main area whatsoever because the turret was primed and ready, right posted on it that yeah. entire time, so... Yeah, you're right. That's probably what influenced the decision of making that play to flank late. That's such a deep wall. Drone doesn't see op this time. No. Knife dodge, too. Flash and dart will come out. The side of fly yeah, quest dude. right here. Is it enough? Deep. Oh my gosh, she almost hit that. Really good timing, though, from fly quest. I like how drilled they are on taking that space. Yeah, I mean, so it was the drone, and then it was the flash, mm -hmm. and then it was the dart, and it was the knife. And the, like, and the swing at the same time. Yeah, you're right. From Dodo, because Dodo's aware that if a jet's ever in any of those positions, they're either playing anti in the first place, or they might just turn, right? And that mm -hmm. little split-second timing of fluorescent turning gained all the space for Dodo. And again, we're seeing this play where they're depositing the duelist working another spot of the map and maybe they'll lean back again yeah it's so hard for shopify because they, they're aware that there's been an op on this attacking side most of the rounds yeah. so like yeah, yeah yeah it's hard to want to to get info like you kind of have to use utility left. and that makes it obvious what your setup is mm -hmm. And if you lose your body on the on the flip side, you just die, right? To the op. So Right, yeah. It's a bad situation it's, to be it's in, tough. right? It's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Most shocks through, Dodo Nut with blades. They're so paranoid about a late lurk A yeah. that Mel is still holding it. It's all that conditioning from previous rounds. Yeah. You're right. Blaze has ult. Right on Q. And they're gonna flash and off the chaos. <gasps> Turn it up balls. Oh, they can push no. more. Put Tuck a behind the, the harbor wall. There it is. One enemy remaining. Right on Q. Floor gets one with the op. The spam's next. Starbound can do nothing. And they're going to drop the op this time. They're not able to save it, but it doesn't matter. No other choice there. Switching sides. A 6-6 six, six half. And what a ferocious comeback at the end for Shopify. Four of the last five. Their way. <laughs> Back and forth, back and forth. Has been the story of these last two maps so far. Both teams are playing very, very well right now. This is very high level Valorant. Again, fitting of a grand final. What is the adjust? I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> How do you reset from it's that and just turn? Turn eyes to the next half. I just want to point out there's a hero deagle light armor on floor right now. Investing a lot into floor. As you should. <laughs> this first fight. Dodo! Getting Noya! No armor there. Oh. Yeah, no armor on Dodo. Well, I mean, you've got yeah. to expect value out of this setup for floor, right? Dodo's playing perfect right to. now. A second one. The potential on the third will not connect. But how do you match the firepower that's been left before you? A quick little refilling from Mel as soon as Floor oh, takes no. a step back. Last Mel goes forward. Down. Thea falls. And it's all on Floor now. 70 HP. Four bullets. Three targets. Health is a commodity too. Lace and Sondra both taking damage. Oh, what a response from FlyQuest. In the big investment. It's Dodo Nut who saves the day. Dodo Nut played that round near perfect. Yeah. Getting one on top pipes, getting out, and then finessing this dart. I mean, that that's that's really great and confident jet play right there. Things we love to see. Mm -hmm. And Starbound again on the Outlaw. Wow, this is a really light investment from FlyQuest. They're super confident they're going to win this round. You have a Deagle, a Ghost, a Stinger, and then you have a Marshall and an Outlaw. I wonder if, it, if it's probably a combination. Yeah, they think they can win it, but also you want to get that op online as soon as you can, right? Mm. It has been the recipe of success for them on this map so far. Yeah. And that's on attack. So yep. just imagine what you can do on defense with an op. I will say, though, this Harbor Viper comp 
it is mainly geared towards trying to not get off. Like that's the whole point of this comp is to use all those walls to gain space and make it hard right. for the enemy team to get op kills. But we've already seen Dodo Nut playing in front of the wall, understanding where the dart's going to be landing behind her. There's a Marshall found. Mm -hmm. Out playing. Spike down what a good a. pop flash swing. If we're already seeing yep. things like that. Eco frags are nice. How does <laughs> Flora get some of these kills? I swear. This is just prime oh. positioning right now for Dodo. You're already so close to your jet knives. If you get one more kill or die that. here, next round, all you have to do is just go for the orb with a dart that lands on belt. Maybe a KO flash as well. So you can't get punished. Mm. And you have jet knives going into a gun round for, for SR. One enemy remaining. <laughs> Ace, Dude, she was ace, just ace, yeah, ace. She was playing. Ten seconds left. She was oh. playing there to try to get the kill. The ace comes to do. Uh oh. Uh, the eye by power ace for Dodo Nut. All, all off of the Marshall. We talked so much about the outlaw. I don't think it shot a single bullet. It was all Dodo Nut the whole time. You're 100 correct, and having that. That was a nice flash. Yeah, that, that pop flash play is sick. But One having. Your jet have knives into this round, and you have an outlaw. If you tag anybody up, you can knife them in the foot if you want, and they're dead. And look, how Lace all of a sudden has the marshal. Now you actually have a pretty decent buy going into this round, and you're getting aggressive yeah. here with the outlaw behind you. Oh, you a lot of this is huge! So aggressive. That's the first gun down. Placing swarm grenade. Floors dropped. The swarm tip of the spear has been blunted. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But that's enough damage for Starbound to now get a one shot onto onto Mel or even one of the marshals, right? Mm -hmm. Even oh no, a deadly mistake! Another excellent start for FlyQuest that could potentially be oh, squelched. God. Never out of a round. That was such a costly Locking error. Down. Where do they go from here? I see Sonder testing the water, see if there's anything left B. Inch. They do have the weaponry to post Yeah. on these they heaven angles and all this stuff, but what can they do about the mollies? They have no well, smokes. I mean, they also don't have a ton of time. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the mollies, right? This is... Look at four bits of utility and shock darts next. This is just this is hard. Yeah, the nano, the spit, oh, all wait of a second. it. One enemy remaining. No, oh my there's gosh, not there's not enough here. Nicely done. And so, with that, a little bit of damage was dealt from FlyQuest. Actually, a considerable amount of damage because now they have the off back online for mm -hmm. the defense. It goes into the hands of Dodo Nut. Yeah. And it's a it's not a great buy for the attack. It's not great for Shuffle. One enemy remaining. had a really good chance of actually winning this round until yeah. that kill in mid happened. They are going down there not only delays because you don't have that uh, it, it not only doesn't delay because you don't have that AWOL to, to be brought up, but it also ended up kind of biting them in the butt for the retake. Mm -hmm. And your solo smokes like that. It's tough going down. Mm -hmm. Poison's off. I get it though, because if you break that turret, it can open up a late flank. Yeah, for Super sure. Super aggressive. I suggest you move. Reckoning invested. They're going to push the pace on this. That spit timing is really nice. Feeling a lot of the pressure while Sarah gets face backside. Oh, no. Mel has to be careful. She's getting hunted. She's dead. Look at those walls sectioning off and dissecting B. Oh, don't know what I saw. Floor. Did she? Yeah, I saw the barrel. But it doesn't oh, matter. But you didn't see Sarah. Oh. Saunders there. Now they got to understand. Oh, the God. comms have to come through. They're still one back snowman. Floor left to wreak havoc on the side while Alexis and Oya hold the line. Oh. Starbound falls. Saunders inevitable. We're tied at eight. See why Shopify likes using the harbor on this map. It allows you to take all of that snowman area and have a crossfire from yellow. 
And they are just getting caught out at these awkward timings. Shopify's punishing that and that's a that's a pretty advantageous spot for the most part when you are the Viper, I would say. We do see a lot of teams hold a solo Viper on that yellow. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Sam really made a name for himself playing in that area. Mm hmm In the big, big leagues. But I think she just took that little sidestep a little too early. Maybe you just need to be more patient in that spot and just hold the angle. Let them walk into your crosshair because, I mean, FlyQuest, or, I mean, Shopify doesn't have a flash to, to push you off that angle. So you really can. You can just hold. Yeah, you, can, yeah. you really can just hold and at least make it a one for one at the very least mm -hmm. yeah get yours and then you know maybe maybe get out or yeah. fall but at least you've dealt a little bit of damage you're right that's a tough that's a that's a tough spot to be in jovi calling a timeout for FlyQuest, tied at eight apiece out. and it, maybe not to the same degree as, as sunset but a similar story in that it feels like FlyQuest is definitely in the fight yeah but they're struggling to put him away We'll see These last two games have been great. They have, they have. Super competitive. They've just that's the problem though. Can they close? Can they can they take the map? Can they convert? Yeah. Here. A guardian for lace. A spam through. Nothing quite tagged yet. Oh. That's that's a great start. If you're Shopify. Oh, floor is about to just do some crazy some things here, things. I believe. Yeah. Oh, that's just ran out. All good. Didn't see it. There was the crazy things you were talking about. <laughs> they swing back sight. They destroy oh, FlyQuest. And that should be the round. And this comp that Shopify's playing, if you don't get an early first blood and like disrupt the actual hit, once the hit comes yeah. through, I mean, you see how hard it is. There's so many different layers of walls and mollies that are being thrown. There's a dart. Floor is dashing, not that round, but might actually have ended up working to her benefit, not dashing into top gen that time because there's yeah. uh, three people backside primed and ready for that. And that's such a similar hit to what we saw. I mean, that pathing is so similar to what we saw two days ago. Yeah. And it's so strong, like you know what's gonna, you know what's gonna happen, but you just get smothered on that site with all that utility. Now you have Sovault and Jet Knives online for Shopify. And also, I want to point out the economy of Shopify right now. I'm seeing players sitting on 7K. So they're... They have so much money. They're very healthy. Oh, just floor on 7K. But still. That's 7K after the buy. Yeah. Dude, I, they, you're right. They're so rich. Buy shorties for the squad. You know what I mean? You might as well. Yeah. Hand them out, right? Starbomb with you off. You get a shorty. Starbomb with off. Flash. And that was their success on the attack side. This flash is really nice. Over the top of the orb, so Dota can take an angle there. Mm -hmm. Poison's off. That's a, that's a really early cascade to try to stop the actual yeah. tube peak, but no one's there. Blackhouse is super proactive into this round. Breaking mid turret early on and then re-clearing the B space. Jump spot gets the info too. So Dea just needs to tuck here and just hold that off angle like I was talking about. And they have a crossfire too. Mm hmm. I think the question is they may not have a flash, but is there a she, shock? Is she there needs a to be, spit? She, yeah. She needs to be telling somebody, yo, break my dart, because that's going to scan. Well, it doesn't scan though. Was it a little too far away? There's the shock. There's the flash. Dea takes some damage. Don't and now panic, the knife don't too. Don't panic. Just hold. Spit. Poison she's patient. Oh, she's panicking. It doesn't matter, as I say, that Dodona picks up that off angle that I was talking about. Yeah. A little bit of help, a little bit of reinforcements. This is crazy left. that Alexis is just in this box. Now, what's the cue for her to move? Once it makes some noise, A, do they go? Because Alexis can't hear anything right now. Oh, she's heard Now that. she hears everybody right oh, now. Oh, she's heard them both. Oh. And they're coming back, B! It's a beautiful insertion, and now the cove to protect. The swing out, but she falls. Uh -oh. 10 seconds left. With 10 seconds left. They're gonna run at her! Tap. It's a tap! Are they oh. gonna get back in time? Spike going down. So does Sarah. Whoa! Sonder with another. Oh, almost gets a third through the wall. 2v3. Mel one away from pit. 
Op still in the hands of Starbound. They can toggle behind that wall. Out of charges. What's the gas situation for Mel? It's got to be close. Here. Noya here close. Wall goes up. Starbound out of the round for now. The turrets provide a little bit of cover. Oh, oh she lands it on to Mel. Noya has to do it on her own. The swing on the first, the tap tap of the vandal. Shoulder thrown. Just the narrowest. Oh, and they're going to get the kill. The defuse yeah, comes through and we're tied again. That's <laughs> so crazy. It was a great round. Start of the round from Shopify. Getting Alexis all the way pushed up. But then taking the one of you against Dea. That one kill was so pivotal in the round. Sonder with these clean shots in mid. Wow. Yep. I got kind of worried in that 3v2. Like, yeah, you have the numbers game, but sometimes having an op on the retake can be a detriment. Yeah, it almost makes it worse. You're yeah. right. You become so one-dimensional in your attempt. I like that Starbound was the one that got on bomb there and lace covered Wait, because if you whiff that off shot, it's over. There's, yeah, you're right. Sorry, I was waiting for that flash that yeah. came through, but Alexis was there to punish. I like, I I really enjoy the way Fly, FlyQuest plays the, the maps that they play. It, like when it looks good, it looks great because mm -hmm. previous mm -hmm. the previous round, they dry swung mid, broke the turret. This round, they were aware that SR might be holding for that. So they have the pop flash, right? And it doesn't work out, but the idea is there. Oh, they're dry here. You got Thunder, but I don't think you're expecting a second. Never oh. mind, Blaze falls. Once again, the round gets out of hand for FlyQuest. Yeah. I would love to see a stat of how many times SR wins the round when they're up 4v5. Oh, floor aggressive, dashing forward. They have fall, Starbound's on the trade. Oh my goodness, that was disgusting. <laughs> Op doesn't shoot that fast. Maybe, maybe old chamber meta. We would have yeah. seen something crazy. Likewise, are playing this map so much like that old chamber meta as well, but with a killjoy. They really are. You have the jet that creates all that havoc and, and pandemonium on sight hits or or even on a, on the attacking, like first bloods, right? Just trying to go for a first pick. And then you have the op post on the other side of the map. So reminiscent of that old meta. Starbound's making this KJ look like way. a duelist, like that old chamber as well. Oh, she's gonna cook. She's not done. She's not done. She's gone oh, hunting oh, three oh, to the death. Oh. Goes for the fourth, not able to land the ace, oh, but that's all right. That's gonna end up on Reddit anyway. That was nuts. Spike planted. The first shot alone was insane. So fast. It was insta. Shopify showed a different look this time around, waiting for the A utility and then exploding right after. Mm -hmm. Here. Just ridiculous. Shopify's mental is so impressive. Like they just, they're never out of it. Yeah. They truly give it their all to the very last round. And I think you can you can make a similar uh, a similar argument and discussion for FlyQuest because man we've seen a lot of fight out of that squad. Yeah. I mean they they have had a great map so far against the Shopify who have looked insane mm -hmm. on this, but now we're seeing FlyQuest struggle with dealing with the star the star power really of fluorescent, uh, and we saw Zand in their previous series also have a 28 kill game with a win. Similar yep. scoreline, 13-9 it was for the last time they played this map. So it seems like they do struggle against these main duelists on their defensive side. Maybe they have to play in better spots that can more so punish the entries of floor and not give the early first bloods. Maybe that's the adaptation that's about to be made from Jovi with this FlyQuest roster because so far these last couple of rounds they've been getting a pick they've been getting picked apart. 
And I don't blame them for going for these aggressive plays still because it worked so well early on in the half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now they're getting punished back to back. And regardless of what the conversation is for Jovi and for FlyQuest right now, it is the last opportunity. That's the last time out burned. Yeah. Need to and Shopify are potentially two rounds away from wrapping this thing up Thanks. and sending everyone home early. The tough thing is, if it if it does end this way, it's not indicative of how good FlyQuest have played. Yeah, they they looked really good. If this does end up being a 3-0, I mean, it, it just as easily could have been a 3-2 or anything like that. They could have won. Yeah. Last map, a hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. And they put up an, an incredible fight on Icebox. But Shopify pulling away late. Now up two rounds. An orb a must-win gun round for FlyQuest. The series hangs in the balance. This A hit is going to be so hard to hold because this Harbor Alt is going to come out. Bloody but Starbound, if she... if. Starbound's able to get one here. Yeah. And get out and use the KJL. Huge. Massive. Were they tagged? Harbor wall goes up. Op sits on the sideline for now. Does floor go? Does floor go? I don't think so. For now. Think so. Yeah. So if they don't do anything about that alarm, they're going to lose the pit. The double flank. Alexis is expecting the Oh my flank. gosh. And it was a little wide. Now Sarah's there to try to do what her teammate could not. Oh, it's floor! No way! Did she just... 30 seconds how did, how did she even get there? She just jumped off of off of, off of heaven. Full Her jump. She didn't, have, she didn't have dash. She had no dash, Doug. Holy smokes, what a play. <laughs> just when it looked like FlyQuest had a leap. Well, okay. One enemy remaining. Okay. Okay. Mel. Seconds left. With nine seconds left. Wow. Well, it's flying by. Mel falls. Lace gets three on the round. FlyQuest gets to ten. A Dude, that that round alone was so was such a good description of what these last two maps have been. Yeah. FlyQuest played that so intelligent, especially Starbound getting off a of site there, not committing the alt screens because they knew that that Harbor alt was gonna come out and they were gonna push screens if if that had, if that KG alt went down there. So doing that alt in heaven, it's a lot safer. It's a lot easier to hold that. No one really yeah. is going to push you heaven into that one choke. So great heads up awareness from FlyQuest. And then to even have the extra layer of that Sovault coming in while the flank is happening. I mean, they set that round up and knew the reactions of Shopify. Yeah. It was really, really nice. There's a fight about to happen. Long Mel falls. Another, another kill from aggression on the B side of the map. Mel going down yeah. this time. And Mel was trying to explore past the wall, but FlyQuest was holding it. Oh, yeah, has to now... use KGL. I mean, they have so much has money. To. Yeah, all right. Invested. Time bought. Oh. Sarah falls. That's a big fadeaway kill, too, man. Alexis trying to do what she can to keep them back. Two are going to fall. Noy and Floor left alone. It's just Fall one. four! Is this, is this it? Is this how this goes? She decides not to hunt, just remaining. drops the molly. Bomb grenade out. Oh my God. Starbound has an op. S switches it for a vandal. Placing Time is every day. Is hit? Bomb grenade out. It looks short. Oh, it's short! Oh, but it doesn't matter. The Red Bull clutch comes through for Noya. Shopify rebellion on series point. Match point. Once we win, just oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Doug. Bomb grenade out. Wow. I had to focus for a second. And that Molly oh being goodness. missed actually ended up working in Noya's favor because I mean if you're starbound, you already have it more than half, then the Molly misses. You hold. Yeah. Yeah, you hold. Blades for Dodo Nut, a bucky for Thea. You imagine there's gonna be an early pit? Oh, this is so but heartbreaking. They hold. Wait, there's a flash. There's a flash of knives off of this. Oh, it's dry? Oh, oh. it's been tagged. Dota Nut has to dash away. It dashes into Alexis's crosshair. Saunders gonna fall as well. B is now wide open. And they just put the pit down A. Oh, so now the pit is gone too. They still have lace. <laughs> Floor falls at 3v3. 
but still just a Bucky for Thea. No real opportunity to upgrade a weapon either. And Lace is so low. 17 HP. Sarah has two shocks. This is so intense. Any type of mistake here would be, I mean, the game for FlyQuest. Shopify are picking the right site. 30 seconds left. Oh, I wonder here too, e even if they realize it's a B hit, they would have to go all the way down to B long to upgrade a weapon. So it's going to be uh, a Bucky the rest of the way. At this point, she just has to try to stick the bomb for her teammates. Oh, and it's just, they crumble. Now it's Saya, a ghost and a Bucky, a dink for one. That weapon in this scenario. What a brutal outlook. What a brutal situation. It's impossible. There's shock darts. There's two different types of mollies. Noya is just swinging. It's not winnable, Doug. No. Delaying the inevitable Bucky here. Gang. As this Bucky continues to tick away, that's all the little B. Win. The Shopify Rebellion era is far from over. They are your Series 1 champions. And they got pushed, Doug. They definitely got they pushed. But that, all that experience, that championship mentality and the, and the great timeouts and composure from Effie's, they prevail. Dude, I think we, we, you know, we talk about bend, but don't break. And I think that was a lot of this tournament for Shopify. They got pushed. You know, they dropped a couple of maps. A couple of other ones were outrageously close, maybe in ways people wouldn't have expected, but they showed resilience. They showed depth in the face of getting pushed. They didn't take a step back. They continued to be confident. Mel's calling was masterclass again yeah. to the surprise of literally no one. I mean, yeah, they got pushed by Decimate. They got pushed by FlyQuest. And FlyQuest has a lot to look forward to as the season goes on because there's still a lot of Valorant left to play throughout the year. But the Shopify Rebellion team somehow just gets better. I don't get it. That's what makes them Shopify. That's what makes them the champions. They just, they take all their losses, even in, even in series that are close because they don't actually truly ever lose, right? I mean, they, what, they lost one map in the last, uh, this last run that they did. But the fact that they're able to continue improving even on the games that are close is what sets them apart from these other teams. And I got to give it to FlyQuest right now because they played, on these last two maps, they played phenomenal Valorant. And yeah, they did. the strategy was was there. It just came down to these these tiny moments of mistakes that they made that ended up being their detriment. Yeah, I think mistakes that they made, capitalization from Shopify in those moments. Yeah. And you know, we talked about it throughout the series. You can't you can't afford an inch against Shopify because they'll take the whole thing and ultimately that's kind of what it boiled down to. So Shopify Rebellion sit on top of the game changers world again. And it doesn't seem like they're letting go of that throne anytime soon. We're going to go to a break. The desk will catch you guys on the other side. Rachel, you okay? No. I live with a broken phone. I can't trade in. Okay, that's dramatic. Better plans for Ryzen. Everyone can trade in their old phone and get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus with AI on them. A new phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Wait, I'm on Verizon. Can I still get it? Yeah. I gotta trade this in, right? New and existing customers can trade in any Samsung phone for a new Galaxy S24 Plus watch and tablet, all on us. That's up to $1,800 in value, only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings.
The Shopify Rebellion domination continues as they are crowned as the Verizon NA Game Changers Series 1 champions of 2024. They don't disappoint. They keep leveling up, Wyatt. They keep winning titles. And the reigning North American champions bag yet another win under their belts, this time against FlyQuest Red. The game hasn't changed. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we, we were going to see if the game changed. It's a it lie. It didn't change this time. The, it, the, the title is truly a lie. But, I, I mean, again, we're back to what we were saying between one of those maps. Like, what more can you even say about Shopify at this point, really? I mean, they're just, they are the undisputed goats. And that, that is it, plain and simple. Enough said, straight up. I, I, I do think, especially in maps two and three, FlyQuest brought a lot more fire up against Icebox. And you could see that so, uh, Shopify were challenged a bit, and but I think also within that, within those more difficult rounds and moments, you can see the class of this team and their ability to adjust, keep things simple, slow things down, uh, and continue coming out on top of some pretty chaotic rounds there towards the end. Absolutely. Kudos to FlyQuest Red. I think Baby Bay said it at the end of that series because they had a phenomenal performance throughout the series. I know the scoreline looks intense when it's a 0-3 to three loss, but much closer rematch this time around, especially compared to that upper bracket final when it felt a little bit more one-sided in some of the scorelines, Wyatt. Yeah, I'm excited to see what FlyQuest can do as the year goes on. Sentiment very much the same with several of the other GC teams that we've seen, these newly formed teams. Because at the end of the day, this is FlyQuest's new project. I love the direction that they took in the construction of this roster. They have, it, it was very sensible in the talent in regard to the firepower that they brought in, and then the structure from the support players that they brought in at four for the G team. Lace and Dodo are clearly two of the best in GC at the moment, period, and it's only up from where they're at now. The team has a ton of potential, which, you know, I think they've only... Absolutely. Uh, we heard it from Sonder in the interview yesterday. They have only had just a bit of time to work together and build that synergy, and we have so many more events coming up throughout this year to look forward to, but... Kudos to Shopify Rebellion and once again credit where credit is due because Fluorescent was absolutely dominant throughout this entire series under. Floor my goat. I don't know. They, they're just on a whole other level here. Uh, every single game, but especially on Icebox, anytime Floor loads into the server on Icebox, it is an absolute trait. Uh, Floor was up 13 kills in that game 29 kills 16 deaths and it started on the pistol round whenever there was a rifle in hand knives the op it didn't matter fluorescent was just an absolute demon round after round i mean it's just we're, we're back to the endless what more can you say classic but, i mean floor is just shopify are the undisputed goats and floor is individually the undisputed goat of floor good i mean you can't it's just it's undeniable. The mechanical skill is a treat to watch every time. What what they pull off is just outrageous. And I, there's, yeah, I mean, again, we're just, we're going to be spinning the wheels for another few months on just how good Shopify are all the time. Every GC is how good <laughs> Shopify are. And then we'll, it, we'll see if uh, someone can rise to the occasion when it comes to GC2. Because, listen, there's certainly contenders, but... They are just clearly still at the top and at the top of their game. Absolutely. And I'm getting word that we have Shopify Rebellion, the entire squad ready for the Verizon post-match interview. So let's go ahead and congratulate the champions once again. Congratulations. Uh, I, I mean... I have now spoken to y'all so many times. <laughs> You're certainly no strangers to being champions, but Mel, I'd love to start with you. I know that Series 3 at the end of last year was the one time things didn't go your way, but you were able to redeem that in winning the entire championship at the end of 2023, rather. So coming into Series 1 this year, especially knowing that there were all these new teams coming together like we saw in FlyQuest Red, uh, you know, what was the mentality of the team like and, you know, what were your expectations going in? I think our expectations were definitely we want to win this and we definitely went into it with a bunch of hard work. Like from the get-go when our season started again, FE's was always on some 
hardworking type B, like we are going right back. We're not going to get complacent. Like a lot of teams in our position will find it easy to find themselves get complacent, but we have the discipline to keep working hard, even though like we're in a pretty good spot and we looked good. And even uh, referring back to the last series uh, of NA last year, you can always lose, uh, you can always win from your losses by learning from them. And even this series too, like we'll be watching this back, I'm sure, and looking at the mistakes mm -hmm. we made and optimizing it so we can win even more dominantly. I love that you bring up Effie's because I'd love to ask you, I know that on that second map on Sunset, it actually got very, very close for FlyQuest Red a couple of times. They were at map point. Uh, you called a few timeouts. Things always seem to work for your favor after those timeouts. So what did you talk about? Uh, well, it was just tactical stuff, you know, like I, I could see us slamming our head a bit on something that clearly wasn't working. And I think, uh, I think they, honestly, they were playing a bit differently than what we've seen before as well. So like, it's not uh, like a shade or anything at Mel. It's just they, they, we prepared for something that we didn't see like coming. Mm. So like, it, it's on me when that happens to like, just make sure we redirect. Cause like, it was like, they were not playing exactly like we planned them to. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, at this point, it's just about like, yo, they're not like, forget the game plan. Let's just shift towards something else. And we expect them to adapt sometimes and they don't as well. So like, it's a bit like, it's a bit of a mind game when we take tack pauses, for sure, especially against Jovi. Speaking of sort of expectations on what they'd be coming at you with, what were the learnings from that upper bracket final, and how did FlyQuest Red feel in this rematch in this Grand Finals BO5? Uh, well, I, I think they they played better uh, in this game, for sure. I mean, especially the last two maps. Like, the first map was a blowout. I, don't, I think our Lotus is really good, and theirs is, like, one of their bad maps, so I think our Lotus was straightforward. Uh, Sunset, honestly, there's. I don't think we played bad. I think Sunset, they were just good. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunset, they they played really well, and we bring her, we brought our best game, and then they 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 matched it. So like, props to them, honestly. And Icebox, I think we kind of threw a little bit. Like Icebox is a better map than the for us than the result shows. They were playing like well. They were playing confident. We we're playing as a team, but I think the execution in our Icebox was really bad uh, compared to what it could be. But I think they played better in the BO5 than they did in the BO3. The BO3, we lost by for uh i think we just we just didn't play the game that day so like mm. it is what it is but i think they played much better today than they did uh during the bo3 but to add our rematches against flyquest are always fun because like you mentioned earlier there's more mind games in it and jovi mm. and uh, the team he has there uh and the assistant coach do a pretty good job of like knowing like where our gaps are and like anti shredding so it's never like the same look as the first matchup so like kudos to them I also think it's, I say this every time I speak to you guys after you win, but the sheer consistency and the mental strength with all the experience that every single one of you have now reaching the grand final so many times, it's just truly impressive every single time, even when your backs are against the wall, when it was map point on sunset, you guys stay strong and are able to carry through. I'm curious from your perspective, specifically having been champion so many times and having seen so many of these different players on different teams and seeing different teams try to become your rivals. What did you think about the talent pool this time around, especially with teams like Decimate Gaming making top three for the first time? I think she's talking to you, Mel. I'm not a multiple oh. time champion. <laughs> oh, I mean, you are, though. Okay. Right, less than like you. The third, third, uh, third champion, too. Some international one. Um, I think uh, the talent pool, I think it's interesting to see so many free agent teams because they're like playing in it for like the passion, you know, like Passion Project. I love Jazzy, um, but uh, just admit, I wasn't expecting to get top four and they beat Passion Project. So there's clearly like a like, in-depth talent pool here. It's just a matter of like these teams requiring more time together and like investment and resources. And I think that we could have like a very competitive year, especially because, you know, for us, we have a target on our back. So, and so does FlyQuest Red too. Like I see their matches, they're playing them to like, the thin wires like everyone is very hungry for like these these paychecks essentially so we, it keeps us on our on our toes so um appreciate everyone trying so hard also i swear right. we're not in the basement sr is treating us very very well <laughs> it's just like, where we're being very very uh kept well by uh by Shopify. 
<laughs> no, no, no. You guys look absolutely beautiful. It feels like a perfect place to game and frag out. Uh, last question before I let you guys go. Uh, just words for your fans. I think what all of you have done is just truly amazing and unprecedented the the performance time and time again is so inspirational and the fact that you're able to keep up this motivation is just really inspiring for every single person watching so i'd love to, if you guys have anything to say to your fans uh friends family please let us know i think i speak for all of us when i say we really do appreciate all the support that we get it really means the world to us even throughout like all the all the wins and stuff like that even when we have troll rounds and like tragedies to have people back us up and always support us is, is such an awesome thing. And I'm really grateful that you guys trust us with your support. Um, so we're going to try and keep improving. This isn't like us getting complacent again. And we're definitely hungry for the next event. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. And congratulations again, Mel, Effies, Sarah, Noya, Alexis, and of course, Fluorescent as well. You guys are truly the freaking goats. Such a pleasure as always. And congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I always love to speak to uh, Mel as well as Shopify Rebellion, that entire squad. When you think about what they've done, Wyatt, it is truly, truly unprecedented. When you think about even the history of esports, their level of domination, maintaining that motivation is just insane. And Wyatt, we're going to give him a second because it looked like, <laughs> like he was pensive <laughs> in thought. I like, was in deep thought for a second, and by that I mean... I was <laughs> I thought you were no, pondering was, the domination of Shopify. Why are you laughing? I was okay, pondering. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to give a deep, detailed, philosophical answer. <laughs> um, what was the question? I don't know because I lagged out. <laughs> the answer is floor is good though. Yeah. So. And it is. I don't oh, know what the question was. I, I did want to double check because I was going to throw out a... So uh, allow me to hit you with a cool little fun fact here, Ender. Did you know okay. that out of me. all of the uh, North American Game Changers finals that Floor has been in, this was her best performance, statistically speaking? This was the best Whoa. one yet? Crazy. That's what I, I, I lagged out to better. find. I was using all of my internet resources to find that information really quickly. <laughs> Google, that's crazy. <laughs> see, I, I see. I, I, it makes sense that she gets better each game because I'm pretty sure she just instantly jumped in aim labs after the series. That's why she wasn't in the interview. She was just already back at the grind, getting ready for the next tourney. No, it, it's crazy. The fact that this team not only continues to win so consistently, but is also leveling up. The fact that Floor is continuing to level up and push that ceiling higher every single time we see her is I just see what you did there. outstanding as I drop my pen. But let's go ahead and pull up the bracket to remind ourselves the journey that Shopify Rebellion went on to become champions. Again, Shopify Rebellion winning isn't a new narrative, Wyatt, but however, credit to FlyQuest Red. Again, amazing performance. Even with the scoreline being 3-0, they did outstanding on Sunset as well as Icebox, as well as DCM making it to top three. A lot of great names coming out. Plenty of teams are crafting their own narrative so we can follow as GC continues this year when we you know, get to stage two and, and three and we close in on teams qualifying for champions. I mean, there are so many new teams, new faces for the main event. You know, maybe if you're a, a super dedicated GC fan, you might recognize some of these players that are in that like eighth to, you know, fifth, six spots on the rankings. But for the most part, they're all new faces to being in the main event in the playoff bracket play. And we're, you know, standing tall and having great performances against the teams and players that are the mainstays of the playoffs. So just bodes well for the future as the year progresses, seeing these new players rise to the top. Um, and, you know, as, as uh, Shopify, uh, Shopify players were mentioning in the interview, you know, the, the, the passion behind it and what these players are, are playing for, you know, it's, um, it's, it's tougher this year to be able to commit to it and the players that are doing it are, are really uh, you know showing the uh, how would you say I don't know they're just they're, they're showing the the skills that are are their uh, benefit of you know having that commitment to the game yeah. to the competition 
the determination, if you yes. will. Uh, I think uh, especially big shout outs to, uh, to Decimate having a, a big mm -hmm. run here, making it to top three. Uh, YFP, although they didn't make it as far, we were able to take a game off of them and looked very good. And I know that they were uh, pretty down on themselves early on in the tournament, um, in the group stage, in the qualifiers, but they went on a fantastic run to, to make it here. Uh, and all the teams that are in main event you just saw there were able to secure some championship points that are going to be mm -hmm. a big factor, especially when you go later and later into the year and look at uh, that second spot for champions at the end. I think that's the most exciting part for me is knowing this is just the beginning of everything we're going to be seeing from these teams throughout the entire year, as you mentioned, Series 2, Series 3 coming up in just a couple of months. But for now, that will be a wrap. This is it for your Verizon NA Game Changers Series 1 tournament as Shopify Rebellion are your champions once again. We'll be back in just a few months for Series 2 to begin. But until then, take it easy and have a wonderful night.